we're with Cullen Hoback, he's the director and documentary maker. Welcome to The Guardian. Oh, thank you, it's good to be here. And since you did that screening in Washington to a room full of uh, policy makers, mm -hmm. how did that go? What, what was the response? Congressman Amash, who is a sort of libertarian Republican, he ended up hosting the event. We managed to get uh, a bipartisan, uh, bicameral response to the film. In the modern world, uh, there are a lot of ways in which our privacy can be violated. And uh, one of the problems we have is with this third party doctrine where uh, if a, a third party, a private corporation, holds your information, the government now believes it can access that information. And it's we had over 100 people who are policymakers, uh, congressmen, and, uh, and also their staffers in attendance there. And simultaneously, we were able to, after the film was done, uh, put an entire panel of whistleblowers in front of them and uh, someone from Mozilla and EFF. And so we were able to really have meaningful discourse, I think, on uh, how to best rein in the NSA's behavior. Inside NSA, we have a no electron policy. We communicate um, basically using dead drops. So, so we, we do not use any form of electrical communication whatsoever. And um, we do that for a reason, because we know who, who Big Brother is. The government, or certain entities of the government, are not particularly pleased with Russ Tice, Thomas Drake. These are both NSA whistleblowers who have come out and said things that embarrass the government. And yet we were able to sit underneath, literally underneath the Capitol, and have a conversation in front of uh, high-powered officials about these issues. Terms and conditions didn't start being about the NSA, though, did it? This no, was just brilliantly lucky timing for you. It's interesting because as I crafted the film, the NSA aspect became more and more relevant. When I did tester screenings, I realized that people were really intrigued by that. And so, yeah, the film evolved from being kind of about how corporations are abusing our data to being about how the government is abusing our data. What is the potential regulation that might change? What's, what's being looked at mm -hmm. and explored in response to what's happened? Actually, there's over 25 bills that have been floated in front of Congress at this point, but there are two that are really interesting. Uh, one is an evil bill, one is, a, well, one, is a, one is our best chance so far of reigning in the NSA. It's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. That's the USA Freedom Act. Now, that's been introduced by uh, Samson Brenner, who actually uh, was the one who introduced the Patriot Act. He was, he was one of the fathers of the Patriot Act. This man who, who pretty much created a bill that allowed this spy system to exist has come out and said, wow, this has been used in ways I never intended. The USA Freedom Act uh, makes some pretty significant strides. It's not perfect, but it reigns in um, the Section 215, which allows um, this dragnet of all phone calls in America. And it, and it has a lot of other um, aspects to it, which, which really do hopefully fix a lot of the NSA's activities. We had whistleblowers sitting up in front of members of Congress and I asked them this very question. I said, do you think this is going to fix the problem? And their response was no. No, no legislation is going to fix the problem. What will fix the problem, these whistleblowers said, is getting rid of the NSA. Or at the very least, uh, which, which is That's never gonna not happen. going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, a bureaucracies are self-sustaining, it's not going to happen. But I think their second point might be more feasible, which is we need to change the discourse. We need to um, hold those, who, those accountable who, who allowed this spy system uh, to propagate, which is General Alexander and, and, and uh, Clapper. And until we start punishing the people who, who made these spy systems available, nothing will change. The big tech companies have been very, very noticeable in their lobbying and their activities in Washington. Are you convinced by that? Facebook and Google and all of these tech companies see that trust is eroding and they are hemorrhaging cash right now. Uh, especially in the international markets. Mm -hmm. And what are they going to do to regain that trust? Well, they need to separate themselves from the NSA. They've realized that. What that's going to enable is some cooperation with NGOs and other partners who've been working in the space trying to rein in the NSA's activities. What's the future for Edward Snowden? It's interesting that you had a lot of whistleblowers at your event in Washington, but noticeably, no Snowden. No Snowden. I would like for, for Snowden to... Um, to receive immunity, that would be great. 
Uh, this is actually something that I think we're going to be moving towards. And we have a, a website, trackoff.us, and so far it's been about this idea of the right to know, the right to control. Look, when you have Sense and Brenner coming out, the guy who founded, the, you know, who created the Patriot Act saying these systems aren't being used correctly, in response to what Edward Snowden did and said, which he would never have known otherwise, I think we need to be thanking the man who made that possible. You know, uh, he's a hero. Right now, the conversation is not about it's not about that. It's about, well, is he, you know, did he commit some kind of espionage? Uh, we need to give him his passport back, and we need to treat him like we treated whistleblowers in the past, like Daniel Ellsberg. We need to thank him, and we need to um, make it possible so other people like Edward Snowden can happen in the future.